I feel annoyed, because I've been waiting for Taylor for almost half an hour now. It's very unlikely to happen since he always arrives at their meeting place earlier than me. But today seems different and I don't know what happened to him. It's the 1st of February, and we are supposed to meet up for the opening of our friend's restaurant. Taylor and I have been best friends since we were kids. In high school, we met Tanya, and the three of us became inseparable. Now that we became entrepreneurs, we always support one another. It's Tanya's restaurant opening today, and we agreed to meet up for brunch. She's a chef while I became a writer. Taylor is now a content creator. He also took up a journalism degree with me back in college. My name is Isabella Tan, and I'm 28 years old. I'm already living on my own, and have my apartment where Tanya and Taylor live as well. We were trying our best to succeed in our chosen careers. I'm happy about writing novels, though I was forced to write about a werewolf romance by my editor. It's not exactly my genre since I like writing sci-fi without the romance part. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a man-hater, all an NBSB no boyfriend since birth. I had a couple of guys I've dated in the past, although my one and only ex-boyfriend were two. Jealous of Taylor, so we broke up. I feel jealous of Tanya, since she will be married by next year. Today is her last attempt to have a stable business. She tried the food cart business before, but it was a flop. The other one was a cafe, but it's also not for her. So hopefully this time, her restaurant will be a success. I'll be making a write-up about it so that I can post it on my social media account. Hopefully, my followers will try VIP Eats. Yes, that's the name of her restaurant. As for Taylor, we have the same fate when it comes to relationships. All her ex-girlfriends hated me so much. They can't accept our friendship and they get jealous of me. I can't blame them since Taylor always puts me first. I'm always grateful for that since we're both the only child of our families. We grew up together, and I feel like he's my older brother. He's only a few months older than me, but I still take advantage of being the spoiled little sis. Our parents are business partners and my dad and Taylor's dad are best friends. It's also the same with her moms. Maybe that's why we also became best of friends. My parents also only allow me to hang out with him. Hey, girl. Where's Tay? Tanya asked as she approached my table. Her restaurant looks more like a diner because there are booths instead of the traditional tables and chairs. She said she wanted to make it like a pit stop. That explains why some of the booths look like cars. There are also traffic lights inside. No idea. It's my second iced tea refill, and I'm getting hungry. I complained. I can bring you the special now if you like. Tanya offered. You know I can't eat without tea in public. I reminded her. I don't know why, but it seems to have become our tradition. It started when we were still about eight years old. Both of our parents brought us to a nice restaurant. I already ate before Taylor arrived, and he didn't talk to me for about a week. That incident sticks so from then on, I will never eat in public without him. It's the reason why my ex-boyfriend hated Taylor. I always bring him along on my date, because I can't eat out without him, Why well, I will feel very guilty about it. That's why you can't get a boyfriend. It's either you find a guy who will be fine with Taylor around, or just date him instead. Tanya suggested. Ha, ha, very funny. I replied. She always teases us to just date each other, since we can't function normally without each other. I'm not sure if it's some kind of a condition, but we can't live without each other. At least it feels that way since we are so used to being with each other all the time. Here comes the Prince Charming. Tanya announced in a sing-song voice. I ignored her and turned to confront Taylor right away. It's irritating to wait for him, for almost an hour since he rarely does that. It always happens the day after the full moon. He also looks haggard today, which makes me worry. You're late. It's a statement and not a question. Sorry, I woke up late. He apologized. 
Hello to you too, Taylor. Tanya butts in. Hey, Tan. Congrats on your restaurant opening. Taylor acknowledged her. Thanks, Tay. I'll ask the waiter to bring you the special for today. Tanya replied and exited the scene. I noticed that Taylor grabbed a glass of water and drank it too fast. He poured another glass and he finished it again. Tay, are you okay? I'm genuinely worried about him. He's always very thirsty whenever he arrives late to our meetup. But maybe he was just in a rush, that's why he's acting like this. Yeah, I'm fine. I was just in a rush to get here. Taylor explained. I felt relieved that it's the reason for his actions today. The waiter arrived with our food and I noticed that it had a lot of meat on the plates. That's our meaty platter, enjoy. The waiter walks away before we can say anything. Wow, meat. Taylor examined and started eating like a hungry wolf. He's a meat lover, but it started during our senior year in high school when he only eats meat. That's very unhealthy. I scolded him, but he just ignored me and continued eating his all-meat meal. After showing up for Tanya's restaurant opening, I have to go back home to visit my parents. It's a weekend and they always wanted me to visit them at least once a month. Taylor didn't join me to go to his parents' house. He said that he needs to do a live stream tonight. So I ended up just taking the bus ride home. I hate driving and I normally just call an Uber when I have to go somewhere. Except when I'm with Taylor. He hated the commute and he usually brought me around the city at home. But this is one of the days when he seems to need his space. He doesn't feel like hanging out with me today. I perfectly understand him, since I also do the same thing to him when I have my period. It's always the first day when I don't want to hang out with a guy. I'm just curious if other men also have the same thing as Taylor's. He started to change his habits and even his diet before we finished high school. My dad told me that it may probably be because of puberty, but a decade has already passed from that moment. He seems to adapt to whatever it is. I just ignore it and don't take it personally whenever it happens, but I continue to nag him about eating Vegas during his normal days. He turned into a full-fledged carnivore overnight. He looks fine except for that one day every month. It only takes the bus to arrive at my destination. My parents' house is just a short walk from the highway. It's an exclusive village where the houses look like they are trying to outdo each other. But there's one mansion that stood out. Taylor's parents just live across from my parents' place. His parents decided to have a mansion. They like to do it grandly like a typical aristocrat. But my parents are humble and settled for a five-bedroom house instead. Even our house seems to be too much for just the three of us. Now that I moved out of there, it's only my parents and the maids who live there. Taylor's parents have a lot of servants in their house, as they called them. My parents have a humble beginning, while Taylor's parents came from rich families. That's why they don't mind having a massive place to live. Taylor is the only heir of his family's wealth, but he's also a disappointment to them. His parents don't approve of his chosen career, since they came from a family of business tycoons. Although I can also tell that my parents are disappointed in me. They are in the retail business while I became a writer. Luckily, my parents are cool about what I wanted to do in my life. After all, they're looking forward to having a reliable son-in-law. But the problem is, I don't even have a boyfriend, so I'm sure that they will be disappointed about it big time. My bell your home. My dad spotted me right away and entered the gate. Hey, Dad. Where's Mom? I asked. I'm over here, sweetheart. My mom replied from the garden. My parents always greet me, as if they are about to sell me something. I can't blame them since they are both salespeople before having their big break. My mom takes off her garden gloves and walks towards me and my dad. We sat on the bench and tried catching up for a bit. Did you know that Nympha is getting married in June? My mom asked. As always, it's another update of who's getting married while I'm still single. 
Yeah, she invited me. I replied. Where's Taylor? My dad asked. He never fails to ask about Taylor whenever I visit them. Maybe his parents are just waiting for some news about their son. He never visits them, even if he drives her there. He's a little busy these days. I replied. We should visit his parents. You know that they are always happy to see you. My mom suggested. Sure, let's do that. I agreed since I feel sorry for them about not seeing their only son. I'm also close to his parents since they are my godmother and godfather. Our families are very tight and I feel obligated to also visit his parents. He doesn't want to see them since they always try to force him to have an arranged marriage. I understand why he chooses to ignore his parents for a while. Although he hasn't dated anyone for almost two years now. Maybe he just gave up on the idea of finding someone he will marry someday. After all, his parents will still have the final say about that. A simple feast was on the dining table when we entered our house. My mom cooked my favorite dish, baby back ribs, and different side dishes. But the sight of meat made my stomach turn for an unknown reason. Sure, I had a lot of meat from Tanya's restaurant earlier. But the sight of the oven baby back ribs never made me feel sick before. I tried to calm my stomach down as we took our seats. I can hear my parents talking about how handsome Taylor looks now. I just keep on smiling at whatever they're talking about. My stomach is making me lose my focus, and it causes ringing in my ears. I feel nauseous all of a sudden. The moment my mom put some ribs on my plate, I stood up and ran to the bathroom. I thought I would vomit right there and then, but luckily, I was able to manage to throw up in the sink. It feels like my stomach is trying to come out, but it finally stops after about two minutes. I can hear my parents from outside of the bathroom. Belle, are you okay? My mom asked in a very worried tone, but I can't force myself to reply. Belle, sweetie, tell mom the truth. Are you pregnant? My mom asked. I almost fell from my seat because of her question. My knees still feel weak from all the vomiting that I have to endure. Thankfully, it finally stopped and we're back at the dining table to finally eat the oven baby back ribs. Of course not. What are you talking about? I replied to her with a disgusted tone. She looked at my dad who was quietly eating. He seems to be in deep thoughts. I can't believe that my parents will think that I'm pregnant just because I vomited. But now that I thought about it, maybe it was the food from Tanya's restaurant. I think it was food poisoning. Excuse me, I have to call Taylor. I said in a panicked voice. I immediately walked to my room, and I didn't see my parents' meaningful glances at each other. Let them think about what they want for now. If the cause of her vomiting was Tanya's food, maybe Taylor feels sick as well by now. What if all the customers who dined at her friend's restaurant also felt sick? Tanya will be in big trouble for sure. But I have to check on Taylor, if he's fine, before informing Tanya what happened to her. Hello? Taylor said on his phone. He sounded better now compared to when they met up earlier. Hey, are you okay? I asked. Yeah. Why would I not be okay? He replied. I think I just had food poisoning from Tanya's restaurant earlier. Are you sure you're fine? I informed him. What? I'm going there, right now. Taylor exclaimed. Before I could say anything, he had already hung up his phone. Knowing Taylor, he will not answer his phone now. He will be here soon and I can't stop him from doing it. I heard the panic in his voice, and I'm sure he will be here soon. I think there's no stopping him from coming here now. What I can do is just wait for him to arrive. I decided to go back to the dining room, since I feel hungry from almost vomiting my guys out. I need to eat so I will feel better. When I arrived at the dining room, my parents suddenly stopped talking. I guess they are still talking about the pregnancy thing. It's funny that they will suspect me of that. If only it's not embarrassing to tell them that I'm still a virgin. Now, I'm hungry. 
Let's continue eating. I told my mom and dad. Did you call Taylor? Is he coming? My dad asked me in a serious tone this time. Yeah. He said he will be on his way. I replied in between bites. My dad looked at my mom's detection, and they signaled something to each other. I don't care what they are up to now. I'm so hungry and I have to eat first. Maybe when Taylor arrives, I can just get back with him to the city. After eating, I decided to rest in my room for a bit. Although I no longer feel nauseous, I still feel weak because of the food poisoning incident. I forgot to call Tanya because I fell asleep for a brief moment. When I woke up, I checked on my alarm clock from my bedside table. It's almost 9, 00 p.m. 1. I suddenly remembered about calling Taylor earlier. He must be here already, waiting for her to wake up. So I decided to fix myself and get out of my room. As I walk my way downstairs, I can hear people speaking from the living room. When I got there, I saw Taylor and his parents. They seemed to be planning something. I thought maybe they have decided to go on a trip. But why are they all here? Taylor hasn't talked to his parents for a few years. But it looks like they have finally reconciled. I'm glad that they were able to set aside their differences. It's been a long time since our families got together like this. There she is. My beautiful goddaughter. Taylor's mom greeted me with a kiss on my cheek. Hello, Ma and Pa. Glad to have you here. I welcomed them with a smile on my face. Taylor looks at me with a worried expression. Is he trying to tell me something? But my mom pulled me closer to her, and we took our seats on the couch. Taylor and his parents did the same to the couch facing us. Are we going on a trip? I excitedly asked my mom. My mom just ignored me for the first time in my life. She's always attentive to me before tonight. But the parents look serious about whatever they are planning to do. When I looked at my dad, his eyes were piercing to Taylor's face. The tension between all of us is unbearable. I wanted to just pull Taylor so we can get away from here. But he also looks serious and he's avoiding my eyes. I wanted to signal him, but he seems to be doing a good job ignoring me. Now that everyone's here, I guess we can already set about the date. My dad said in a firm tone. Taylor's parents look at my dad nervously. It never happened before, and if getting the date is that important to them, maybe I should just button him. But I caught Taylor's eyes sending me a signal to stop, whatever I'm planning to do. Well, it depends on what the kids prefer. Taylor's dad replied. Maybe we can do it this summer? His mom suggested that it made my mom excited. That's a good idea, Katie. That will guarantee a bright sky without worrying about the rain. My mom agreed. Summer. Are we going to the beach? I can't stop myself but to ask. No, you two are getting married. My dad informed me. I feel that my world suddenly turned upside down again. But it's not because of food poisoning. Dad, what are you talking about? I asked after trying to take a grip of what's happening. You don't want to have an illegitimate child now, do you? My dad answers me with a question. Of course not. But why are we getting married? I asked and looked in Taylor's direction. He's against having an arranged marriage, but he seems to just go with the flow now. I don't know why my dad is insisting on us getting married, all of a sudden. Then I realized that he thought that I was pregnant when I was vomiting earlier. We don't want that to happen, Belle. Taylor's dad told me. Wait, are you thinking that I'm pregnant with Taylor's child? I asked in an unbelievable tone. Our parents suddenly looked confused and they all looked at Taylor as if they will only believe him but not me. This night is getting weird, but it will be over now. Taylor will tell them that it was just food poisoning. I'm sorry, Belle. Let's stop keeping secrets from our parents. I'm willing to marry you anyway. Taylor said that shocked me. Tay, what are you talking about? Tell them it's not true. I pleaded. Taylor admitted to us that they have been living together for two years now. His mom said that adds to my confusion. 
You were supposed to be married a long time ago, but Taylor said that you need more time. But now that there's a child involved, we can't delay it anymore. His dad added, I can't believe what's happening now. Even Taylor's parents think that we are in a serious relationship. Is she the one they were setting him up for an arranged marriage? Is that the reason why Taylor stopped visiting them? There are so many unanswered questions in my head. But I can tell that whatever I say, they will still insist that we get married soon. I need to talk to Taylor before the parents set the wedding plans in stone. Taylor, what's going on? I helplessly asked him, trying to stop their plan. But he didn't even look at me this time. What's wrong with him? He seems to be just allowing our parents to plan our arranged marriage. But it's no longer arranged because this time, it's forced marriage. He knows that there is nothing we can do to change their minds. Still, he should have told them that I'm not pregnant. But I'm looking at him and he's just quietly waiting for everything to settle. If he didn't argue with them, he knew that I would just agree to this forced marriage. It made me feel like crying now, because I can't do anything. I guess we should just let the kids talk. My mom suggested. Thankfully, they all agree and leave us alone. I waited for Taylor to approach me, but he didn't. He just remained in his seat, as if I'm looking at a different person. I couldn't help myself and I started crying. I feel so helpless for the first time in my life. Stop crying. Taylor finally said and sat beside me. What is that all about, Tay? Why are you letting them do that to us? I confronted him. Because I agree with their decision. Taylor replied. What did you just say? I asked because of his surprising answer. If we don't get married, they will force me to marry some random woman. I'd rather have you as my wife. Taylor explained. So, you will just do anything to save yourself. That's not like you, Tay. I replied. You know that we can't live without each other. So, why not get married instead? He asked. I agree with that since I can't even eat in a restaurant without him. My ex-boyfriend can't stand having him around. But we were so dependent on each other. It's impossible to get married for love. Are you saying that let's get married just for the benefits? I asked him. Do you have any other ideas? Common. Bell, it's our only chance not to get married to some random people. You have to help me. Taylor said in a pleading tone. I hate it when he's right, even if we both know that it can lead to a disaster. We both believe that marriage is for people who are in love with each other. But in his family, arranged marriage is just a normal thing to do. He told me that his dad called him while he's on his way here. My dad told his father that I'm possibly pregnant because I'm throwing up. His dad told him that I'm their first choice to be his wife. But if we do not end up together, he still needs to marry someone right away. His hands are all tied up and he's under a lot of pressure. Maybe that's why he has had some mood swings lately especially after the full moon. It may be just a coincidence since his parents are pressuring him to get married. If not, they will disown him and he will not get his inheritance. Now that he explained everything to me, I know what I have to do. I need to help my best friend to avoid marrying someone he doesn't even know. After all, I don't think I can even date anyone seriously with him around. I need him more than he needs me. He's always there for me, and now is my chance to be there for him. Even if it means that I have to put my freedom on the line. Although we don't have any romantic feelings for each other, we are so used to being around each other. If he gets married to another person, I will lose him for sure. All right, let's just do it. I finally told him my decision to go through this marriage. Okay then, let's tell the oldies that we're ready to get married then. He suggested it with a bright smile on his face. Now that the date of their wedding has been settled, Taylor can stop himself, but to think things over. If he will be married to Bella, it will only be just a matter of time before she discovers his secret. Taylor's secret is that he's secretly in love with Bella. She had no idea that he thinks of her that way.
They have been best friends forever, and that's why he can't tell her about it. He's afraid that she would hate him for his feelings. But now that they are about to get married, he has more pressing concerns. It's okay for Belle to know that he loves her. He has another big secret that even his parents are unaware of. Taylor is a werewolf. It's the reason why he's always not himself once a month. Every full moon, he has to leave town to transform into the wilderness. He called it his alone time to keep him sane. But nobody knows that he's doing it to keep his secret from everyone including Belle. During one quiet night, when he was still in his senior year in high school, an incident happened to him. His parents are out of town for their business, and he was left home alone. He can't ask Belle to come over since his dad won't approve of it. They have been best friends since they were kids. But since they are going through their adolescent stage, they can't spend the night on their own. That's Belle's father's rule, so he ended up by himself. He remembered that he got so bored, so he left the house and went to a convenience store. It's where he usually hangs out if Belle can't get out of her house. He doesn't have guy friends since he's always with Belle. It made him think about his life decisions at times. If only he made friends with the other guys, he wouldn't be alone now. But Belle will never approve of that so he just sticks with her like a little puppy all the time. Taylor bought some snacks and soda to bring home. He can't even buy some beer, because he's still underage at that time. So, he decided that he would just watch a movie and sleep early that night. The convenience store is only a few blocks away from their house. So he just walks there and now, he's going back. Even their maids are not at home right now. They all had their day offs and decided to go home to their families. He realized how eerie the road was on the way to his house at night. It wasn't the case when Belle's parents are the ones who are out of town. He hangs out with her if she's home alone, without her parents knowing. But this time, the road looks extra dark than it ever was. The fog also started to form as he walked as fast as he could. He felt like he's in a horror movie now. It only takes three minutes for him to reach his house, but this time, it feels further away than he thought. He felt relieved when he could already see the lights of her house. So he walks faster to get over this eerily feeling. But before he reached their house gate, a huge wolf suddenly appeared from the dark. It was the 90s and their village was built near the woods. The residents often encountered some wolves at night. But this one looks bigger than the ordinary wolf. It's back so all he can see is two red eyes. Taylor decided that it's time to make a run for it. But before he can even move a muscle, the wolf charges at him and bite his leg. He thought that he would be devoured by that wolf by that time. But it let go of him and just stared at him. Please don't kill me. He pleaded though he realized that he was talking to a wolf. Then he noticed that the wolf was also bleeding from its neck. He didn't understand himself at that time, but he tried to reach for the wound. To his surprise, the wolf howled and then transformed into a human. Oh my God! Are you a werewolf? Taylor asked the man who is now bleeding to death. Yes, I am. You will be too on the next full moon. He replied. What did you do to me? Taylor asked. Listen, kid, I don't have much time to explain, but I'm the last of my kind. I'm sorry I have to keep our kind alive. Be careful with the werewolf hunters, the man said. Before he could ask another question, the werewolf just vanished in thin air, as if it disintegrated because of its wound. He immediately runs to get inside his house, trying to forget the horror that he just witnessed. He thought that it was just a nightmare until the full moon happened. Taylor feels sick on their camping night. He's with his parents, and they wanted to make it their family tradition. But he never thought that it would be the night that he would be transformed into a werewolf. Taylor runs through the woods because he felt the need to chase the moon. But in the middle of his chase, he felt a sharp pain inside of him, as if his blood started to boil and right there and then, he became a werewolf. 
It was against his will, but he can't do anything about it anymore. His first hunting happens in the woods, where he devours a deer. It's also the night, when he met with the moon goddess. Although it felt more like a dream she told him, that Shiz, giving him her blessing. You will continue the line of the werewolf tribe, and find your mate to reproduce and build your pack. The moon goddess informed me, and then she just disappeared out of thin air in the middle of the woods. The long-awaited wedding of Isabella Tan and Taylor Ibanez finally arrived. I should admit that I'm also excited about it. The wedding gown I'm wearing was rushed. That's according to my mom. But I suspect that she had it ready way back before the incident. Not that I don't appreciate her efforts at this wedding. But it seems that even Taylor's parents were able to have the venue. We talked to those people, but they said they're fully booked. I guess both of our parents easily pulled some strings for this wedding. Taylor's parents gave me a diamond jewelry set that includes a tiara. I know they are filthy rich, but this is too much. Although they insisted, I just accepted it. I don't want to have issues with my in-laws at an early stage. They also happen to be my godparents. You're so beautiful, honey. My mom exclaimed when she saw me. Thanks, mom. I replied and smiled. She looks teary-eyed seeing me in a wedding gown now. I feel like I'm wearing Cinderella's wedding dress. It's shining and shimmering whenever I move. There's nothing simple about it when we all agreed to have a simple wedding. But I have to just go with the flow. Don't cry, Mom. You're the one who wanted me to get married in the first place. I reminded her and made it a joke. Yes, I know that, sweetheart. But seeing you in that wedding gown made me realize that we were about to lose you. She replied and snorted a little. Taylor and I live in the same building, Mom. It's not like something will change. I told her. You were friends back then. But after you get married, everything will change. She seems to be sure about it. I wasn't able to reply to her dilemma since the wedding coordinator informed us that it's time. That made me feel like I was about to walk on death row. Marriage is the last thing on my mind and I don't believe it. Although my marriage with Taylor seems to be planned. Our parents are too close and they wanted us to end up together. I guess we both see this coming. That's why Taylor just agreed on it instantly. As much as I wanted to avoid it, I can't turn my parents down. It's the only thing they tricked me into doing. We arrived at the church and saw a lot of people from outside. Then I realized that they are all going inside the church for the wedding. I can't believe our parents were able to still make it grand. We're both not that friendly to have a lot of friends. When I stood at the main door of the church, the wedding march started playing. It made me cringe because of the romantic ambience. I don't think I can even romantically see Taylor. It's not because I don't love him. I do. But I only love him as my closest friend and a brother. I remembered our conversation during the time we were preparing for the wedding. We agreed to get a divorce after a year of our marriage. That's if we didn't end up falling for each other. I laughed at Taylor's condition, since I'm sure that I will never romantically fall for him. He's like a brother to me. How can I fall for him? It's not like our one-year marriage can change our friendship for years. Living in one house is not going to change my feelings towards him. I smiled widely at the guests as I took my first step towards my best friend. My dad seems to be snorting, as well just like my mom earlier. I'm holding on to his arms as we walk towards the altar. I can see Taylor is smiling nervously as we approach him and his dad. I can't help but giggle discreetly because of his reaction. He's also walking too slow. Not so fast, sweetheart. He told me, Dad, don't tell me you're being dramatic about this as well. I replied to him, I told your mom, I'm not gonna cry. But now that we're here, I wanted to snatch you and run away. He made it more dramatic now. You're the one who called everybody for this wedding, oh look, all your employees are here. I pointed in the direction of the guests. Belle, you know that your mom and I only want the best for you. 
so even if it hurts, I have to give you away. He's still walking so slow that the panist already repeated playing the wedding march. Yeah, Taylor is the best guy for me. But you're still my first love, Dad. I told him that made him sob in front of everyone. When we finally reached Taylor and his dad, he looked like he didn't want to let me go. But it's too late for him to change his mind now. His friend almost dragged him to his side, so that Taylor and I could continue our walk to the altar. Our wedding ended like a funeral instead. Both of our parents are crying throughout the ceremony. Taylor and I looked at each other and giggled as the priest was doing his thing. I can't believe that they were the same ones who forced us into getting married. By the power vested in me, you are now husband and wife. You can kiss the bride the priest finally said. I felt relieved that it's over now, and I can't wait for the reception. Our parents were able to prepare everything. But Taylor still needed to kiss me so he did. I was just expecting a peck on my lips, just like we practiced. But he seems to be carried away with all the emotions. How can a simple kiss from my best friend make my heart stop for a moment? When it's finally over, I can't believe what just happened. The moment I opened my eyes, I no longer saw my best friend but my husband. Our wedding reception is also grand. I can't believe our parents told us to prepare for it ourselves. They were able to make a good job with everything. Taylor and I just end up tiring ourselves and didn't accomplish anything. But we're grateful that our parents are powerful enough to get what they wanted. This wedding seems to be for them than for us though. Tan. I thought you weren't able to make it. I run into Tanya to greet her. It feels so nice to finally find a familiar face. Our parents' visitors are all over the place. Tanya is our only friend around here, and I'm so happy to see her. I won't miss the wedding of my two best friends for the world. Tanya said that made me emotional. Are you with Yvonne? I asked for her fiancé. Of course, girl. I won't be attending a wedding. Without my fiancé, he's just a little surprised that you ended up getting married before us. Tanya laughed. Well, it's partly your fault because of your food. That's why we end up marrying each other. I told her. Don't make it sound that I forced you two to get married your parents did. Tanya giggled some more. They both look in the guy's direction. Taylor and Yvonne are also laughing by themselves. When I look at Tanya... I noticed how in love she is with her fiancé. I wish I can also look at Taylor the same way. We're no longer best friends anymore, because he's now my husband, and I don't know if we can ever go back. What are you thinking? Are you nervous about your first night together? Tanya teased me. Of course not. Nothing is going to happen like that between us. I mean, he's Taylor. I denied it right away. Well. That's because he was your best friend, before. But now, he's your husband, it's his right to sleep with his wife, you know. Tanya continued to tease me. I went speechless from that thought. Tanya's right, Taylor is my husband now. If he wanted to sleep with me, he can. I don't have the right to deny him his rights. That made me nervous now, and it's Tanya's fault. Just then, we saw our guys walking towards us. My heart seems to stop beating looking at Taylor getting closer to me. Yvonne congratulated me first and hugs me. He's also excited to see me and Taylor married now. He looked meaningfully at Tanya and then at me. Taylor wraps his arm around my waist, and I suddenly feel like my cheeks are on fire. All of a sudden, I can't deny him from having any physical contact with me. Don't worry, Taylor. I already inform Belle about your marital rights. She will be cooperative whatever you want to do after the reception. Tanya told him whole laughing. No need to do that, Tan. I won't do anything that Belle doesn't want me to do. Taylor replied that made me relax a little. Stop teasing, Isabel. You know she gets easily embarrassed. Don't mind her, Belle. You know Taylor better than the two of us. Yvonne told me. I just smiled at him but my mind is still racing on its own. Why do I feel something else now that Taylor is close to me? 
am I expecting him to make a move on our first night? I tried to brush off that thought. Taylor holds my hand to make me relax throughout the reception. Tanya didn't tease me anymore, and I felt a little relieved by that. Well, I guess we should be going now. Everyone is already gone. You can't expect us to come with your honeymoon. Tanya slightly started again. Whatever, Tanya. Well, see you after we get back from our trip. I told her and kiss her on her cheek. Taylor, make sure to go easy on her. You know what to do. Tanya reminded Taylor. Yes, Mom. I'll take care of her for sure. Taylor laughed. Yvonne pulls Taylor away from us, as if they have to talk about a secret. Tanya and I both laughed at them, before she suddenly looks at me with a serious face. Belle, I'm not just teasing you about it but now that you're married, Taylor has every right on you. She reminded me. Relax, Tanya. We already talk about our plans. After a year, we're getting a divorce. I whispered to her. What makes you think Taylor will let you go now you're his wife? Tanya asks. It's Taylor. He always keeps his promises. I replied. What if you fall for him within the year? Are you still going to divorce him? Tanya looks serious. Well, I'm not sure about that. Hey, Taylor, and I grew up together. There's no way we will end up falling for each other just because we're married now. I laugh nervously. Sure, whatever. Just make sure to be honest with each other. If you want to stay together, that's okay. Nobody is forcing you to get a divorce. Taylor loves you, and he will suffer if you ended your marriage. Tanya informs me. I know that Taylor loves me as his best friend. I love him too, but not in a romantic way. This marriage can break our friendship. But somehow, we still went for it for our parents. I don't want him to marry another rich girl. He barely knew. So, I guess I have to make some sacrifices for my best friend. Hey, you both look so serious. Taylor said when he and Yvonne went back. It's just a girl talk. You know how it works? I told him. Yvonne and Tanya said their goodbyes and left. Now, it's just me and Taylor. Even our parents already left without even saying goodbye. We have our room in the same hotel, where our reception was held. So, all we have to do is to go there and rest. We have an early flight to Paris tomorrow for our honeymoon. Our parents made the ideal wedding and honeymoon come true for us. Let's go to our room now, Mrs. Ibanez. Taylor told me that made me feel nervous again. When we get into our room, I can't believe it but feel excited. Taylor's parents gave us a presidential room to stay on our first night. I usually stay in a regular hotel room whenever we are on a trip. It would be perfect if I don't have to share this room with him. Not that I don't want him around, but we weren't allowed to sleep in the same room since middle school. But now, they have this place for us to spend our first night. That made me realize that he is no longer just my best friend. Taylor is now my husband and he has marital rights. Wow, it's a nice room the oldies got for us. He exclaimed and started taking off his jacket. Hold on. What are you doing? I tried to stop him, but he took off his suit and lay down on the huge bed with only his pants on. What? I can't sleep with a top on. He informed me and I realized that he has been like that since we were kids. Whatever. I'm getting out of this wedding dress. I decided to walk to the bathroom. Where are you going? He asks. I'm going to the bathroom. You don't expect me to strip naked in front of you. I replied and disappeared from his sight. The bathroom also looks great. There's a jacuzzi with rose petals in the shape of a heart. I decided to have a dip before I go to bed tonight. But my wedding dress is not cooperating. I can't seem to reach the zipper from the back. I can't take it off on my own. Taylor, a little help here, please. I shouted as much as I wanted to have some privacy. You called Princess. He immediately peeked at the bathroom door. I realized that I didn't even lock it. What if I was able to take off my clothes and Taylor came in? I brushed that thought off my head. 
I'm glad that I didn't lock the door. At least he's here, and he can help me unzip my gown. It's irritating now that I realized it's hard to take off. Come inside. I need your help. I told him in an irritated voice. I extended my arms on the long sink to give him better access to my back. He didn't know what to do and hugged me from behind instead. I burst out laughing at what he just did and he looked surprised. His reaction is so funny my stomach hurts from. Laughing? What? He backs away from me. I'm not going to the bathroom and calling you just to hug me. Unzip my gown, please. I explained to him. He looks more surprised and confused now. It's not even funny but his reaction is so I laugh at him again. Maybe he thought that I'm seducing him right now. But I wouldn't be laughing if I'm planning to do that. I tried to be serious about it so we can get over it now. I can't reach the zipper on my gown. You have to help me unzip it, and then you can get out afterward. I instructed him. Oh, that's what you need me to do. He finally realizes it now. I turn my back on him again, and he moves closer to me. Maybe he's also nervous about our first night together. I think Yvonne also messed up with his head, like what Tanya did to me. I can feel his body heat as he tried to unzip my wedding gown. But it won't budge. Who made this gown? I can't unzip it. He told me while trying harder. Just try to relax and just unzip it. No pressure. I told him and he tried again. Nope. I think the zipper got stuck on the fabric. He said and looks like he has given up. I can't sleep on this gown. I wanted to get some rest now, but the gown is not coming off. I think I have to just force it off from you. He suggested. Well, it's not like I'm going to wear it again, just tear it down. I decided to brace myself. Taylor stares at me for a while thinking. He makes me face him instead and looks at the gown. Oh, is he looking at my boons right now? I don't want to ask him that. So, I just waited for him to do something. Then he touches the part where my cleavage is located. It might hurt a bit. He warned me and then pulled down the gown forcefully. Ah! Oh, it hurts a bit, as he said. But the gown fell off my body the moment he took his hands from it. I'm now standing in my underwear in front of him. We stared at each other for a while as if both were mesmerized by what just happened. He pulled me closer to him and kissed my lips. I just allowed him to do that as if I'm under some kind of a spell. My mind is racing on what's happening, but I'm not doing anything to stop it. Instead, I hold on at the back of his head so we can deepen our kiss. He embraces me tightly as we both explore our mouths. Then he lifted me and put me on the top of the sink. We continued kissing in that position and his hands are now getting frisky on my body. My heart feels like it's about to burst out from my chest. Our breath sound labored as we tried not to break our kiss. When our lips finally parted, we stared at each other, as if we hadn't seen each other for a long time. Taylor kissed my lips, one more time, and left me in the bathroom. I didn't know what just happened. Did Taylor just say no to his marital rights? I got down from the sink and decided to soak the heat. I felt in the tub. When I finally get out of the bathroom, Taylor looks like he's already sleeping. I feel grateful since I don't know how to face him after what happened earlier. Why would I let him kiss me torridly when we talked about our plans to divorce after a year? I must have lost my mind earlier because of what Tanya told me. Although she's no longer a virgin like me, since she already gave it to Yvonne. Whenever she talks about it, I just pretend that I don't hear her. But I never thought I will think about having sex after the wedding. If it's not Taylor, I should feel fine about it. But thinking about doing it with my best friend is not right. I feel guilty about it since it seems like I seduced him. But my wedding gown is not coming off. It's not my fault it got stuck on my body. When he ripped it off me, I couldn't stop thinking about how hot it was. Get on the bed already. We have an early flight tomorrow. Taylor suddenly told me. Can you move on the side a little? I asked him since he's almost near the center. He moves further on the side, and I finally get on the bed. 
But why do we only have one blanket? I can't sleep without it, but it means I have to share it with him. As if he already knew and he gets off from it. But he's not wearing a top and just wearing his boxers. I thought you would like to have the blanket for yourself, he said and turned to me. I can't stop my eyes from staring at his toned body. Are those eight packs he got on his abs? Darn it. Why would he need to look so yummy? Nice abs are my weakness, but all I have to do is just swallow hard from the sight. I like the view, but I can't let him see me salivate. Let's share the blanket. I just set it to cover his nice body. But you always took it from me when we were kids. He reminded me. We're not kids anymore. I can share the blanket. I told him. Really? That's good to know, but you can't sleep without a pillow. To hug, there are only two soft pillows here. He just made me realize. I'm fine, it's not like I'm a kid. I told him and lay down. Well, I can't sleep without hugging anything. He suddenly moves closer to me and hugs me. I can't move all of a sudden, since if I do, he might tease me. But if I don't, I might end up making the first move. I decided to not move instead and let him hug me. Maybe I can just take off his arms once he's already asleep. But his face is so close to my neck. I can feel his hot breath on my skin. That made me uncomfortable but I still didn't move. Then I remember Tanya told me the first time. She did it with Yvonne. They were just supposed to sleep, but he suddenly kissed her, and it just happened. Do you feel uncomfortable when I'm too close to you? Taylor asked and I went back to my present condition. No, I'm fine. I told him with a seductive voice that I didn't mean to sound like. Are you expecting something to happen? I mean... If you're horny, we could do it before we sleep. He suddenly asks and I blushed. What are you talking about? You, that's gross. I denied the fact that I'm thinking about it just now. Gross. You seemed to like my kisses earlier. He teased me. I can feel my cheeks burning right now. How can he joke about our moment earlier? All of a sudden, Taylor is acting like me. Now... I'm acting like him when I teased him about liking me. But I can't let him make me uncomfortable now that we're laying down in one bed. You like it better? I just let you experience how to be kissed by me. I told him and turned my back on him. I smiled when he didn't say anything. Just what I suspect, he will turn speechless when I say that. Also, I thought because I suddenly felt that he's hugging me now. I can feel the heat coming from his body but I can't move. Then he started kissing my neck, and I didn't stop. I knew it. You want me kissing you. But I'm tired now, so maybe when we're already in Paris. He said and stopped. I almost scream from either embarrassment or maybe frustration. All I can do is just bury my burning face on the pillow. It's embarrassing that I just let him tease me like that. Why do I feel like I'm expecting something from him? This marriage doesn't even have to happen. Taylor wanted to take her right there and then. But he's afraid that she might learn. About his secret. He might turn into a werewolf while making love with her, and he can't risk it on their first night together. Her body is reacting to his touch, and he can smell her scent is getting stronger now. He knows that she wanted to make it with him, even if she tried hard to dent it. That's one of the perks of being a werewolf. He knows when his mate wants him, but he doesn't want to scare her. Even though the full moon is still a few days away, he will transform into a werewolf when he mated with her. The moon goddess made sure that his mate will become a she-wolf too. But he can't do it to her right now, especially when she told him that they should get a divorce after a year. She didn't feel the same way as him. That is why he needs to make her fall for him first, before they make love with each other. We arrived at our hotel near the Eiffel Tower. I've been dreaming of coming here for a long time now. But my parents told me that it's better if I visit Paris, France after my wedding. I never expected to be here with Taylor. Not that I don't want him to be with me. I'm so dependent on him, 
that I'm beginning to think that this marriage is a good idea. He can't be with me if I marry another guy. The same goes if he gets married to a different woman. He always makes sure that I'm comfortable. But now, it seems that his actions are different. Hey, aren't we going out now to see the Eiffel Tower up close? I asked Taylor, who is now laying down on the bed. I'm just testing the bed if it's comfortable, let's go. He joked and got up. We tried to book another room, so we can have it separately. But the hotel is already full because of a lot of tourists. It looks like destiny is messing up with us. I don't have to worry about Taylor, because he's a gentleman. I'm more worried about myself. Wait, we need the camera. I remembered and took it from my suitcase. Are you sure you want to remember this trip? Taylor chuckled. Of course, I want to remember this. I've been wanting to visit Paris for a long time, you know that. I reminded him. Yeah, but you told me that you wanted to go here with your husband. He replied as he opened the door. You're my husband. Well, technically we're married. I didn't expect myself to say it out loud. Taylor smiled widely hearing it from me. I was waiting for him to tease me about it, but he didn't say a word. He just grabbed my hand and we got out of the hotel room. I suddenly feel embarrassed about what I just said. I don't want him to think that I'm into our marriage. I forget about that incident once we are out of that hotel. This place looks amazing and I can stop myself from admiring everything around here. Taylor is holding my hand until we get to the entrance, where we can have a tour of the Eiffel Tower. I got embarrassed seeing other couples being sweet to each other. Taylor pulled my waist closer to him when he saw me looking at the other couples. It looks like we're not the only newlyweds around here. I can't help but feel jealous that they have the love of their lives with them. It made me feel a little competitive. I married my best friend, and not a lot of people do that. Hi, are you also newlyweds? One of the tourists asked us. Yes, we are. We went here for our honeymoon. I replied to her and looked at Taylor, who was now talking to a guy. Really? I'm also with my husband. We're here for our anniversary. The woman informed me. That's a good idea. I wonder where my husband will take me on our first anniversary. I told the woman. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Kathy and that guy is Tom, my husband. Betty pointed at the guy Taylor was now talking to. I'm Belle and that's Taylor, my husband. I can't help but feel a little cringy about it. Addressing Taylor as my husband feels weird. But I like it now in a place like this, where most people are couples. Kathy and I saw our husbands walking towards us. After another introduction with Tom, we all decided to have some coffee after the tour. Meeting new people is not my thing so Taylor does most of the talking. After the tour, we all headed to a nearby coffee shop. It has a view of the Eiffel Tower, and it's very romantic even in the daytime. I notice that Taylor and Tom look serious about their conversation. It looks like my husband is fond of your husband, Kathy commented. Yeah, he never had guy friends. We grew up together and were best friends. I informed her. Your best of friends? Wow, I'm so jealous. I always dream about being married to my best friend. We had an arranged marriage, but somehow, we made it work for us. Kathy shared. Really? What is your secret? I mean, our marriage is kind of forced by our parents. I admitted to her. Well, arranged or forced marriage is almost the same. But for me and Tom, we just decided to make it work. Either that or be miserable together. Kathy replied. Well, we agreed on getting a divorce after a year. So, I guess we're not going to make it work for us. I can't understand why I feel sad. I doubt it will happen, I mean. Look at the way your husband looks at you. He's not gonna let you go for sure. Kathy told me. I wonder what she's talking about. Taylor has looked at me that way since forever. I don't think that he will romantically see me. Then I remembered our kiss after the wedding. 
I swear, I'm willing to give everything to him right there, and then, but he stopped. I know it's hard, but you have to tell your wife about your secret. Tom advised him. I'm not sure if she will understand it, I mean, our marriage was just forced by our parents. Taylor replied with a sad look on his face. There's no need to be scared to show your wife, who you are, we're both werewolves, I know how it feels. Tom said. I don't know when she will be ready for it, Tom. But I love her so much. He feels worried. Well, I think the best thing to do is to go to the island. You will find guidance from there. Tom suggested. I'll think about it. Thanks for your advice, Tom. Taylor said, and they went back to join their wives.